back. First, congratulations, Blair to the Curie, for this great film. Uh, my first question is, uh, how did you get the idea to uh, film this uh, story about love between two men, and is it a true story? Um, everything started from um, two uh, friends of mine, uh, one of which uh, was married to a guy and had two children when she realized that her husband was gay, and for her it was a very traumatic experience. And at the same time, uh, a very good friend of mine uh, was experiencing uh, exactly the, uh, the same thing as uh, the main character here, because he was, he was being pressured so much by the society to get married that he arrived at this point in his life where he said, it's very uh, hard for me even to find partners anymore because people don't want to get out with me because I'm like a bit more open, not really open, but like a bit more open. And uh, he said that for him it was, uh, it came to this point in his life where he had to choose either to settle down and get married and do what society wants him to, or to leave the country because it was getting really impossible. So uh, it, it was, um, I kind of could relate to both, um, to both stories and it just felt um, very necessary to do a film about love because I don't know like for, for me and for most people I think uh, love is the best feeling and the most beautiful and powerful feeling that we can have as human beings and uh, to know that it's it is not allowed because of some kind of society norm which doesn't really make sense it, it just seems so absurd and uh, it it felt that we, we needed to do something about this. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, it's true, love is one of the best feelings we have, but still it depends what kind of love it, it is. Uh, probably it's quite hard to be uh, a gay person in Kosovo. Uh, how did it feel when you were making the film? Did you have any worries uh, what may happen? <coughs> Uh, so just to be clear, uh, when we started to make the film, it was uh, in 2012, and um, during that time there was not even one gay person that was living, living openly in Kosovo. Uh, we had few cases of lesbian uh, that were living kind of openly, but zero gay men. And, um, so uh, when we started to make this film, um, parallel to this, there was one happening, um, there is a magazine called Kosovo 2.0 that had um, a number uh, on uh, sexuality and while they were promoting this number um, they, there was supposed to be a debate and then a party afterwards so uh, a lot of religious extremists and hooligans came in the venue and beat up some people and destroyed everything that was there so for us we, we had already started to work on the film uh, and we were trying to keep it very low-key, not to talk a lot, not to be in the media. And especially after what happened to Kosovo 2.0, we were even more careful. Um, not only because we were scared for ourselves or for the problems that we might have, but um, most of all for me, uh, it was very important not to have that social pressure uh, while we were making the film, because that would mean that uh, unconsciously we will think about the society and about how they will take this film, and we, we would try to be careful into when we treat the subject. So uh, yeah, we we kept it low key because of that, and uh, we didn't really have any problems into while we made the film, but. Um, yeah, we, we uh, yeah, the media. Uh, what is really important and interesting was that we really had the um, support of the media in Kos in Kosovo because all of them knew what the film was about. But we asked them not to publish anything, and we told them why we wanted to do this, and they never outed us. So that was really good, and uh, I think the, their support really helped us a lot into being able to make the film as we wanted without really feeling the pressure of society. 
-hmm. before. Uh, I remember you also mentioned uh, in the interview we had before that you had a plan in case something bad happened after the premi premiere of the film. Uh, we, uh, this was something that uh, wh while we made the film we were discussing it a lot, especially with our uh, two main characters. Uh, we all had those plans what we are going to do when the film is going to be released. Uh, for us, it was like uh, maybe to go somewhere for a couple of weeks until the situation is a bit calm, to take the kids out of school, and uh, and for the actors, they were uh, kind of they were thinking that maybe for them it's going to be a bit impossible for a while to go and walk in the streets like freely and all of that, but then uh, we were very surprised that not nothing happened <laughs> actually. And um, uh, when we released the film, it was in February this year. Um, it was uh, one of the most watched films in the cinemas at that time. And people in actually- In Kosovo. In Kosovo, yes. And uh, people uh, liked the film a lot and we didn't even receive any threat at all. Mm, not even one. Like the actors, maybe three months ago, they received a message Oh, you, I don't know what, but it was not, nothing bad, you know, nothing, no threats, nothing. And this was something that we, uh, yeah, we didn't expect at all, because uh, knowing from what happened in the past and what happens in, Bal I don't know, everywhere in Balkans, we really expected something different. And we, I still don't know what to make of it, why we were yeah. left <laughs> I alone. wanted to ask you, why do you think that people like the film? Um, so probably there are a lot of factors that help each other, but um, uh, one of the things that, uh, comments that we heard uh, was that for them it felt real when they watched the film, they kind of uh, related to the characters, to all of them, and it felt like uh, a bit like watching themselves in the mirror and then uh, a little bit like the, the they were because the uh, the love between two men comes a bit uh, later in the film by that time uh, the audience is invested in those two characters and falls in love with them and is with them so they kind of cannot say oh I don't love you anymore because you're like this. Maybe, I don't know. But on the other hand, uh, I think it's... Um, um, I, I'm, I was thinking a lot about why we were not beaten up. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, maybe it's uh, because every time when uh, pe people get organized about something, it's that there is something behind it. There is some kind of politics behind or somebody has to gain something out of it. So we were lucky enough that the film came in a moment where nobody, there were no elections. <laughs> I don't know. I, no, I really don't know. But I think uh, th there was nothing um, to gain in politics in this moment. And um, I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure. I'm very confused because um, our society is very patriarchal society and normally we would expect something completely different and I still don't know what to make of it. But it's good news anyway. <laughs> um, yes. uh, was it hard to find actors for this film when you told them what's it about, especially for the roles of uh, Beckham and Noel? Yeah. Uh, so it was hard for me to choose the actors with who I would love to work because um, I did a lot of not uh, a sort of casting, but which consisted of not uh, what a real casting should be like to, to give a text and to see if they can do it right. But my casting was more in a table talking about the subject and seeing how open the person was and what is he feeling and where is his mind concerning this subject. So there were a lot of good actors that I interviewed and that I knew that they were really good, but that during these kind of conversation at one moment somewhere, I could see some kind of homophobic um, 
feelings or something, and that would mean that no, I cannot work with this person. So uh, for these two, uh, they were. Um, I knew that we had the same uh, the same mindset concerning human rights. We had very similar artistic views, and we were friends already. But um, uh, yeah, what's what's more important? Why I wanted to do uh, the casting like this is because uh, the actors were involved when, when we didn't even have a script written yet. We only had a synopsis and we, want, we knew what we wanted to do. Uh, so the actors were involved uh, very early in the project and every time we would... Uh, uh, I had worked in a previous film uh, with improvisation. And I love that a lot. So I wanted to do basically the same thing with the feature film. But then nobody gives you money if you don't really have a written script. So what we did is we did all this process before. Um, so we would write, for example, a first draft of the script, which would be okay, but very bad also. <laughs> and we would bring the actors in and read the script and then improvise in different scenes and then set up different ideas or something and make them improvise on them and we would film those with our telephones or our GoPro cameras and then go back home and rewrite the script whatever we thought that it was good uh, good things came out of that session we would take them include them in the in the next draft of the script so this was a long process of three years uh, that we worked like this and um, I think this helped really a lot this helped us to write the script and it helped the actors to build the characters because we kind of, in a way, we kind of built it together. Uh, and um, I really enjoy this kind of working when everybody is, is involved and can get creative and no one is limited. And it brings, I, to, to me, I feel that it brings like a lot of more diversity and more good things and more good ideas that only one person in one head can have in one mind. <laughs> uh, the film is happening now, it's contemporary. Which year is it? Or we also see something from the past when the characters fall in love during the war. Uh, so, like basically the film should be happening in 2014 that's um we have uh, in the first scene we have when the when the bodies are back there is uh, there is some kind of number there which is a code but like there is a 14 at the end which means that it's year 14 but it, it's contemporary yes it's now uh you mentioned it took you six years to uh to make this Five. Yeah, five, okay. Five, was it a lot of work on the script or how hard was it to get the money yeah. for the film? Uh, most, of the, most of the work I think was um, on the script. Uh, it was not very hard to get... Uh, <coughs> we were lucky to get the money from our film center very early in process, maybe in the, in the second draft of the script or something like that. And then we continued and we had another support from Mulvanian um, Film Center. But uh, we didn't really have all the money that we needed and that's mostly because we did this film, uh, me and my partner, and we're uh, kind of... Um, we're also the producers of the film and we're not good producers, so... <laughs> So we couldn't really find money as we should have, and um, that's why I think that's why we didn't have all the money we needed for the film. But we all did this because we really believed that we should have a film like this, and it, it, it was it was coming from the heart. And everybody that was working on the film knew this, so we were all working with very low fees just to you know to make the film, that was the idea, just to be able to make the film. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really gla glad, and I can never be thankful enough to all the crew, especially to our actors, for all the involvement that they had in the film, and for everything that they gave, because um, they really gave a lot, and uh, without them, the film wouldn't have been what it is, for sure. 
you mentioned before that there were no open gay men in Kosovo, but some lesbians. How come in a patriarchal society? Why? I think that comes because we have this tradition of uh, uh, men is such, it's the best thing you can be in a patriarchal society. So um, we have this, this tradition if a family doesn't have a man in a house, a woman can choose to become a man and it will be, we call them burnesias. It's manly women, um, like sworn virgins. Yeah, uh, Yes. So uh, now it's not that common anymore, but because it used to be in society like this, I believe uh, for people in Kosovo, being a lesbian means that uh, you want to become a man, therefore you want to become something better. Mm -hmm. Renounce your womanhood and become something better. Whereas when f for, for men, they kind of see this, if you're gay, you're kind of giving up your manlyhood and you're really becoming something lesser and you shouldn't do that. This is my, f my feeling, so... Um, how is the situation in general for the LGBT population in Kosovo? There were two uh, LGBT pride parades. Is it improving? I think the event in Kosovo 2.0, the one that I mentioned, is uh, something that made things move a little bit forward. So, um, and the situation is far from being good because we still don't really have, like, let's say we don't have not even one person that lives in Kosovo and that is gay and famous and that is out. We have some artists that live abroad that, uh, that can yeah say who they are but like not inside so it's not a good situation but it's improving and um, like we had because of that uh, incident with Kosovo 2.0 uh, then I think the international community made a lot of pressure into our politicians um, and then because we are a very isolated country and we don't even have visas we need visas to travel everywhere, so we have, I don't know, like politicians have a lot of those points to fulfill, like human rights, this and that and that, so um, I think they were kind of a bit pushed to support this community, which is really good, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that it went this way, so in the beginning I think they started to do this because of the pressure from outside and not because they were believing it. But like last year we had the first uh, Pride and um, it was uh, all the politicians came out, the president of the state was also, took part in, in, in the parade, in the parade, Pride. And, um, uh, but it was, in the first one, it was mostly like politicians and people that support uh, the community. And now we had the second one, which uh, we didn't have that much of politicians, mm -hmm. only few that really believe in, in this cause. And, um, and more people from the community were out. But I have to say that both uh, times <laughs> we didn't have any incident at all. So even though this to me, I feel that this started as a pressure. Um, I think we can see some positive change and if it doesn't regress, um, things can be better. But we have a really long way to go. Yeah. So the outside pressure helps a bit. It does, it does. <laughs> Uh, maybe some questions from the audience at this point. Magda Kishno Prashanje, commentar o filmu za režisarko. Not yet. Uh, yes, please. Um, first of all, congratulations. I was really impressed with the film. Um, I was wondering that um, when you talked about um, the way the film was received. Um, do you think that maybe, I'm just thinking, one of the reasons why there were no um, violent incidents, the things that you probably predicted, uh, expected, was because this um, 
the marriage as such is still preserved. I mean, at the end, this couple of two men does not end up together. I mean, it's like they have a certain romance, once again, a revival of love, but one of them stays married. It's, it's mm -hmm. tragic, but I mean, if I'm just trying to, to think that perhaps someone who is straight um, in Kosovo watching this thinks, um, yeah, okay, this is a sort of a deviation and it's tragic and it breaks my heart, I, I understand those feelings, but at the end of the day, you know, everything stays the same. Mm -hmm. Marriage is preserved, this guy doesn't leave mm -hmm. his wife and um, so it's... Yeah. Uh, a very interesting thought, I never thought of it this way. Um, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with it as well. Uh, I, I never thought of it in this light, so it's interesting for me to think about this in the future and to, to, to see if, the, if I can make a link. But for, uh, for me, yeah, I always only saw this as a very tragic ending because I could only see like three people being hurt and, uh, and two people making a family that would never be happy and like making a bigger so circle of unhappy people and a very unhappy society <laughs> at the end. Another question. Shri Krishna Prashanya. Okay, so film was released in February. Uh, you probably went to a lot of festivals. Where were you? Where did you present the film? Um, the the film premiered last. Actually, yesterday was uh, the anniversary of its uh, premiere in Tallinn Film Festival um, for the film, and then it traveled quite a lot. It been it has been in Sydney Film Festival in in United States. I don't know in a lot of places, and I was every time it was so. I was so happy that the film is traveling and uh, it was always, for me it was always very important that um, we always have the news in our country about the film because then it meant that people are talking about this but uh, are not being angry, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I don't know, every time we, we went to another festival it was always like we were in Sarajevo, for example, and um, I really enjoyed the screening in Sarajevo as well because I, I felt that in, in the Balkan countries, people would also get like the small, I don't know, like the small nuances of, um, of our, how do you say, of our humor, <laughs> maybe, that uh, sometimes in the Western countries, they would get lost in translation <laughs> and wouldn't be understood. So. Uh, I don't know, it's traveled a lot. Yeah, maybe uh, an interesting fact is that uh, this year Kosovo has decided to to uh, apply for the Oscars with this film, with the marriage. So uh, we've, we've been, uh, during this month, during this month we've been in uh, LA for the promotion of the film and stuff. So, I mean, chances are zero one point one i don't know what but it's good that uh, at least I mean, I mean i feel good that my country is um has selected a film like this to represent yes. it's congratulations yeah. really Thank you so much uh so when the film went to the festivals what kind of festivals lgbt or all kind of festivals and yeah. curious about that so um in the in the beginning it went in um in all kinds of festivals, but like in the beginning, it mostly went to like all film, film, I don't know, like just the film, film festivals. And then after half a, a half a year or so, it started to do more uh, queer film festivals. So um, yeah, it's between two because I, yeah, I don't know. For for me. For me, this film, it is a queer film, of course, but then at the same time, I don't know, it's about love, it's, it's just a film. 
<laughs> it is. <laughs> um, any more questions, comments, please? Um, to be honest, uh, in Kosovo it's so closeted still that even um, gay people didn't really come straight to me and tell me their impressions. So uh, I had uh, echoes from friends or other people and um, I, I know that they, uh, the community feels empowered that they have a film that represents them and uh, they, they were very happy and in tears during the premiere of the film and you know they enjoyed it a lot but I couldn't say more a lot because these comments didn't come directly to me and um, I, in one way, I feel a bit sad about this because I wished I knew more. And I, in the same time, I cannot go and ask them what do you think because I shouldn't know who they are. <laughs> so it's very difficult for me to answer this question as well. Any more questions? Maybe you remember some other reactions you had when you were traveling with film from the audience or from some people. There is one that I'm, I will never forget and it was during the premiere in Tallinn Film Festival because when I, when I made the film, for me, uh, I always had in the back of my head how will the film be received from the community, you know. I really wanted to do them justice and um, and to portray them as real as I knew I could. And, uh, but I never thought about other people involved in a, situation, in a similar situation. So uh, there was this woman, maybe in, the f in, in her 50, 50 year old or something uh, like that, similar, that came to talk to me after the film and she was in tears and she was saying that uh, her father left her and her mom uh, because he was gay and that she was very angry with him always and that for the first time when she watched this film now uh, she kind of understood a little bit better her father and um, I know that this didn't happen because of the film but it probably happened because her state she was in a state that she could get um, yeah, message. get the message. But uh, I was very, very touched and uh, I was super pleased uh, because, um, first of all, I didn't think at all about children involved in these kind of marriages when I made the film. I only thought about grown-up people. <laughs> and uh, then, I mean, I felt really good because it felt that the, the film was, was doing better than what I expected and what I was thinking, so I was, I was, I was very happy. It's something that I, I remember, I will always remember, I think. Nice. Uh, Prashanya, any question? No, well, then I have probably the last question for you, your future plans. Um, I, since, since we, when we make a film, um, the film is very expensive, form of art to make, first of all, and it needs a lot of time to be made, a lot of, to, to invest a lot. So I took my time to decide and I only now I started to work on my next project, which is going to be a um, coming of age film, a um, musical happening in the 90s in Kosovo uh, during the parallel system of, um, schooling? I don't, I don't know. It's 
it's a long story now to, to tell what happened in the 90s in Kosovo, but when we, uh, when we were taken out of our institutions and schools and stuff, then uh, people from Kosovo started the parallel system. Like we, we started to go to schools in houses and, you know, like in, we had this, this system. So basically it's, it's, it's situated in this time and it's about a wannabe uh, rapper girl and a wannabe gangster boy and their platonic love, which comes a little bit, uh, it's a semi-autobiographical something. I used to be a rapper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling us. Uh, your last chance to ask a question or comment. If not, I will make you to rap now. Oh my God! I always wanted to do this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm uh, actually it's it's true. <laughs> it's true. Now I started to write music again uh, because I I want to this film to be a musical and I uh, I need to write again. And uh, an important fact is that um, I have two children. Uh, my son is 12 years old and he's super talented in music and I'm enjoying this so much because he's making the beats for my song. So I go, oh, make mama beat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I'm, I'm enjoying this so much. I hope he's enjoying it as well and we'll see what, what it's going to be at the end. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to uh, mention that also in the film Marriage, there is quite a lot of music, and both characters are into music, playing and singing. Yeah. Uh, I always, I love music so much, and um, I don't know, it, I just feel that when... Yeah. I can't say what it is, it's just, it just comes from, from the heart, I think. I just love so much music, and uh, it would... Mm. Love, for me, is connected to music. Um, I could never love a person. I, so, oh my God, I'm so bad. But I'm, <laughs> in, in order to, to have my deepest passions come out, it has to be connected to music. So like my partner, I w we were together and I was about to break up with him and then I heard him sing and I was like, oh. <laughs> and we're together, we have children now and everything. So, so singing yeah. saved him. Yes. <laughs> and maybe you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ja, mi je zelo žal, da nismo tega prej vprašali. Unfortunately, yes. So, I think this is it. Thank you, Blerta Zakiri, very much for coming here and for presenting the film. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much.